Okay. Well, welcome to Living Faith on behalf of Dottie and the pastors. I welcome you to our second session this week. And as I said last week, the goal of Living Faith is that we will be transformed through the speakers we have, the scripture and articles we read, and um, the experiences we share so that we may go forth into our family, families and communities and truly live out our faith. And today we are pleased to have Jimmy Clear, one of our members here at EDLC, to share his experience with us of growing up with autism. Jimmy is a motivational speaker, autism advocate, and author, and the founder and owner of Crazy Fitness Guy. So mm -hmm. welcome, Jimmy, and we look forward to hearing what you have to share with us. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, growing up with autism has been uh, any. Anything but easy. Uh, well, where do we begin? So when I was growing up with autism, um, I, uh, they didn't really use the word autism. They used Asperger's syndrome. They also, uh, back then, doctors told me I wouldn't be able to do pretty much anything whatsoever. They just listed a long list of things. Uh, like for instance, they told me I wouldn't be able to read, write higher than read and write higher than second grade level. They told me I wouldn't be able to live independently. They told me I wouldn't be able to just all sorts of things, like even tie my shoes. And I'm just but it's kind of funny now that you kind of think of it because now they slip and slip on the other side. So that really did wonderful. <laughs> But they really were thinking very, uh, like, kind of low tech. Uh, and then my parents were given some uh, of the best advice that they ever had. And one of the doctors told my parents, it's like, you know, we don't have a crystal ball. You're not, we're not sure. I was like, we're not really sure what's going on, uh, what's going to happen for Jimmy. But, you know, just go home, take care of him. And get them get them the help I need. I went to physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, pretty much any kind of therapy you can name. Uh, I was in and boy I could not want to see those medical bills. Uh, growing up with autism, I hard it was hard to make friends because my school uh, district they kind of kept they kind of kind of shunned me for being different from others because I didn't check the boxes. And I was like, you're not normal. I was like, I'm not uh, setting on a washing machine here. And I was like, there's no such thing as normal. Uh, and, and, and one thing they told me, like, and so like, in my, in my, in my school, like I was taken out of classes because big environments did not work with me. Like I had teachers who try, maybe like five classroom assistants and the teacher trying to work in at me, with me at all at one time. And I, I kind of hit like a mental break and then I was just like, I fell into depression. And the teachers wonder why, I remember my parents got like, they called my parents multiple times, called in the home and say, Jim, we don't know why Jimmy's not participating and not cooperating. And it's like, and my parents, they were angry at the school, but they also kind of kind of laughed at it because, I mean, not laughed at me or anything, but they laughed at the irony of the school and say, well, you don't know why Jimmy's not participating because you're trying to work in with him all at once and say, it's like I'm. It's like I am. I supposed to be looking at this person. Am I supposed to listen to this person? Am I supposed to listen to this person? It's like there's six people giving you the same <laughs> different answers. It's like think about a workplace. If six different managers come and tell you, and then your boss tells you something different, who do you listen to? The managers or do you listen to the CEO? <laughs> uh, but apparently, no one's going to throw that that either. And so. By taking me in and out of the bigger classroom and smaller classrooms, it was hard for me to make friends because they're because 
the friends I wanted to make friends with were all in the big classrooms and the regular size classrooms. And so they dragged me in and uh, they were supposed to tell me that they were taking me out, but they did not do that and didn't hold up on their end of the bargain. And then, and I did have uh, a handful of friends, but I called them my close group of friends. They knew, they know me, what makes me ticked, what makes me happy. Uh, so they're like my best friend, group of best friends. And I like to have a group of best friends. So and it's not just kind of awkward and I'm just in a place where no one knows me. And I was comfortable with my uh, friendship circle that when I went to my neighbor's parties, I could talk to some of the adults, but when I didn't know someone by face, I was like, I'm not talking to this person. I was like, I was shy. I hid around my parents' legs because I was that small. <laughs> my parents were like, Jimmy, don't be shy. I was like, I'm not listening to you. <laughs> well, what kind of kid listens to their parents anyway? Yeah. I still try not to listen yeah. to them. <laughs> uh, that was also uh, bullied for many years of being on the autism spectrum. Because uh, even though that the bullies, I don't really feel like they know that I was autistic. I felt like they knew that I was different in a way. Uh, I was... At one point or the other, I was way, I was almost obese for my age group. I was 185, almost on the borderline of obese. And I remember the doctors told me, Jimmy, you got to lose the weight. And I always, I, I kind of thought it was funny because some of them were a little heavy oh, themselves. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure, Doc? And it's like, uh, and it's like, how about we both try to lose the same weight? Uh, <laughs> of course, I did not say any of this, but, but I, it's not like I didn't yeah. thought of it. And then uh, I, I was bullied from elementary school all the way up to 11th grade in high school, where I finally lost the weight with P90X, which is a workout program that you do for 90 straight days. Me, I, me and my dad tried different uh working at gyms didn't know what the heck we were doing then they then we also tried uh my parents got me a personal trainer for at home mm -hmm. and uh that guy was ironically he was uh he was very very heavy <laughs> yeah. Yeah. there seems to be a pattern <laughs> and then what's really what's really um, and then, uh, so basically, uh, me and my dad found were watching this info commercial at night because there was nothing else on TV, and we were basically saw this info commercial for P90X, and me and my dad both looked at each other and say, like, "Should we try this?" And it's like, "Well, we had nothing else to lose, so uh, because we were getting given up." And honestly, I don't know what happened to the personal trainer who came to my house because. At the time, all I cared was about video games. And so I was like, working out, I don't need to work out. And, they, and my parents decided, so I, I don't know what happened to them. He, he, he was there one day and I never saw him ever again. So I don't know if my parents fired him. They didn't tell me anything. I was too busy playing video games in my dad's office. And then, uh, and so once I lost the weight with P90X, I lost 30 pounds. And so then I stood up to the bullies. Wow. And, uh, and before I, I, I'm gonna backtrack on one point because I forgot one point. Uh, also, I grown up with autism. I've also, uh, I, I had a tendency to focus on like a certain, uh, like, in those movies, like and from Hollywood, they always like to say people with autism likes uh, math and science. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm far from math and science. <laughs> yeah. I had to yeah. take math and science in my college and then the next few semesters. And my all my professors keep reminding me, it's like, you know, you're going to have to take it at some point. It's like, take it as far as possible in the future as possible. Take my sweet time. I do not want to take it. And she's like, 
Jimmy started procrastinating on it. It's like, I like to procrastinate on math. I do not like I math at all. all. I can do math, but I will not be an accountant. My brother's an accountant and he works like 90 plus hours a week. <laughs> so uh, one thing I, I really, really appreciate with my uh, friends and family members, extended family, they never treated me differently. They never used the word autism around me. If they used autism, it was either I was outside, I was with my cousins in the basement playing video games, uh, I, or I was at a friend's house, never used it around me. And and I, the reason I brought, brought that up is because um, it, I don't think my, uh, and don't tell my mom I told you this because she would kick my butt, but uh, not really, but I'm sure I get a school room later. And she told me, uh, I don't think my, I don't think my cousin, my younger cousins, I don't think they were diagnosed with autism, but I think they have a little bit at least, like very slightly like I have, but they have some other challenges, but they, I, I don't, they used to, when, when they misbehave, they make the excuse and say, like, well, I'm in special education. And even though I was in special education, I admit I did not behave very well, but at least there was something going on and what was causing me. And I, uh, okay, I'm gonna probably beat up my school district a little bit, but some of it is a lot on their end. And because, they like to consider themselves experts, but uh, I was like, well, if you guys are experts, you should first to know how to work with me, but they try to do everything but work with me. Wow. And and that's what I liked about my friends. They never, never treated me differently. And I don't like people who make excuses for, I was like, well, because I'm, a, because I'm in special education, I can act different. Mm -hmm. uh, I can act out and I was like, you give people with extra challenges a bad name. And mm -hmm. I didn't tell my cousin, my younger cousins this because I don't really think he's gonna process that information. Uh, honestly, I he, he's like only in his 13 and well, I, I just, uh, apparently he's like, he somehow found out by his school district that he's in special education is like, she didn't tell him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no one listens to me, of course. Uh, so, well, and like I said, my whole family never treated me different. My cousins never treated me different. Yeah. We always got into different arguments, fights, but never treated me differently. And my brother just liked to be a pain in the butt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, but the only people that treated me differently and did a really great job of doing that was my school district. I got invited to my own IEP meeting, which stands for the Individual Educational Plan. Yeah. I can tell you from experience, it was anything but educational in that meeting. Okay. Pretty much picture this table, we were there, I was at the head of the table, and I just watched both sides argue back and forth, and it's like, holy moly, I'm, I'm watching a political debate right in front of me. Yeah. And, and they were arguing what would be best for Jimmy Clare. And I was like, well, Jimmy Clare's at the head of the table and, they, and he's thinking that you're both all nuts. Oh, my, <laughs> I mean, my parents, at least they were there to advocate for me. But, um, and I, I remember telling my school district how upset I was because I missed my art class because Art was the only time where I could escape from my everyday school life. And they just, uh, and so, uh, and I was like, maybe, me, and this was before like I got really into exercising. So uh, I was like, have me, have me, make me miss gym class. And it's like, I can't do, I can't do dodge. And it's like, I can't do certain things because I have spinal stenosis in my neck, which makes it hard for me to look left and right, up and down. And uh, I mean, like for long periods of time, it's like I can still do this, but it's like very fragile. Like I even have a pillow with extra loft in it now because 
I, I can sleep on my other pillow. And I was like, oh, great, wonderful. And then, uh, oh, and one other thing I wanted to point about my school district, and sorry for beating them up, but sorry, but not sorry. Uh, they, uh, ironically, and when I looked on their website just the other day, because I was actually planning to make a pitch to speak at their school. Um, but I, and it's funny, ironically, on their, on their website, is like, we, we make everyone feel ex welcome and exclusive mm -hmm. and uh, inclusive here. I'm like, mm -hmm. well, you did a good job with me. Yeah. I was like, however you make you want to feel, however, whatever you tell yourself to sleep at night. Yeah. And just a little further about my school district, they treat me like an outsider. They did not want to give me their uh, accommodations that I needed. There, there was this one lady in the district. I don't know what her job title was, but she argued everything for the school district. And say, like, I thought she, I'm supposed to be getting an education. No, I'm not, I was. I felt like I was in a courtroom being interrogated. Yeah. And they did not know how to support me. And I admit, I gave them a little slack that even though autism was still relatively new-ish. I, I was born October 9th, 1993. That would be newish, in my opinion. But in, in 2011, when I was having my IEP, and I was like, you would think something, of, some may have learned something, but... And ironically, they all said uh, I was a slow learner. I think my I think my school was a little slow. Mm -hmm. Oh, and just to backtrack a little bit again, sorry, but uh, apparently I uh, put this on a different wrong slide, but whatever. They uh, my school district at one point are out there because they wanted me to. Because I threw a pencil in my in the classroom, they wanted me to be deemed as dangerous. It, if I remember correctly, and I have a really really good memory, they told me uh, they said I I should be deemed dangerous, and and I was like, what kid has not thrown a pencil across the room before? Mm -hmm. And there's like that's inappropriate school behavior, and they suspended me. Well, well, they did something even worse than me throwing a pencil. They took me to the nurse's office and restrained me, putting their, put my wrapping my arms in front of me and pulling from behind. Well, years later, I I found out, uh, and and by like years later, I mean like now that I'm in college, I did some research about restraint. And there's actually kids who die from restraint from yes. schools, oh, yeah. from schools, mm -hmm. and and uh, and what's even more upsetting to me is that about like at least twenty out of the fifty states, twenty says it's illegal to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened to the other thirty. I think they all fell asleep on the podium. Mm -hmm. As you can see, I don't care for either party. So uh, take that early bit. Uh, so now um, I'm currently in college, going to Montgomery County Community College. Uh, and don't tell anybody I said that because I kind of, uh, let's just say I, I mean, I didn't beat them up on my podcast, but I sh shared with some people, not naming the school, but I shared, I wish that they did some things differently here and there, making a self-improvement, but I didn't really, I don't, I'm not gonna have my school know about that because they they get kind of a little upset when I suggest stuff to them. Like I suggested a piece of technology and then they finally took it and three years later after I uh, kind, of, kind of just been repetitive about it. So now that I'm in college, I run my own business called Crazy Fitness Guy. I've been up and running for six years. Next year, we're being number seven. 
and and it's funny because of and it's funny to me because all these people in my life that I met here and there, some I stayed with in touch with, some people I did not stay in touch with. They all told me I was not going to amount to anything, and here I am running my uh, business and speaking. And I'm also a motivational speaker with eight other titles, podcaster, live streamer, um, author. I've been published in nine diff 29 different publications. I've been featured in New York City, Times Square on a billboard. And, but, and also just remind you, even though I have autism, they tell me I still won't do any of this. Mm. And it's funny, every every uh, time in school, they always ask me what I what would I want to be when I grow up. Yeah. I never thought about being in any of this. They didn't come to mind. Yeah. What's a podcast? I don't know. <laughs> and let's see. Uh, I. The reason why I became an autism advocate was because I wanted to speak up for others, for those who couldn't or be afraid to test the waters a little bit. Uh, I meant by testing the waters, I put my own foot in my mouth a few times, one too many times. And no one should go to, through what I ever had to do with a school district that I still live in, but uh, and, and what's like I said, no one should go have to go through what I did, and what I also didn't like, and what I also found quite interesting is that uh, uh, well, I was talking to somebody on my, on the podcast. Uh, on my podcast and said that, you, you know, growing up with, uh, like growing up in my school district, uh, like, well, I mean, this guy said that he worked in, a lot in his community to to make a better place. Well, I did it quite the opposite because my community, I'm not saying everybody in my community, but my school district made me feel like well, you're an outsider. You're not really welcome to the school, and so I did not much in my community, and I felt bad. But and it kind of made me feel like I was bad for not doing so. But it's like, well, why should I just go help in my community that didn't really want me? Mm -hmm. And so, and so now I'm running my business. I say everyone should feel included. And I was like, I don't care race, religion, I don't care people's sex, I don't care about what it's like what they do on their free time is what they do on their free time. I don't and no judgment by me. And I also I have to say I owe it all to my family, my friends, because without them, where would I be today? Because I wouldn't I wouldn't know. I they also is you know, you know I, I actually had a choice to when I graduated high school was to either stay in for an, until I'm 21 and then leave or graduate with everyone else. Well, because I want to get the heck out of there, I graduated like everyone else. And, and it's like, are you sure you don't want to? It's like we can be helpful to you. It's like, yeah. Right. yeah. And I was like, I'll tell. I try myself. And I was like, and I took. Three years off, went up. To, I took three years off of, after graduating high school. Went to, uh, then I went to college. Enrolled myself. No one else helped me enrolled. Uh, I remember telling my dad that I enrolled when I was in the, on the golf course uh, with him, and he's like, "When are you when are you starting?" Uh, end of August, and uh, and he's like, "Good luck." I was like, "Hope you don't hate it." And <laughs> and I didn't hate it. I I get I had a lot of good professors. I had some professors who, well, I had this one professor who, well, uh, I don't think he knows how to teach because he, he, uh, if he told it, it was a uh, 
well, one of my majors I was majoring in before I went to media studies was personal training. But like I said, math and science was not my strong suit. And I probably could have learned the science and I found the science in in interesting, but the but the uh, but the professor, if he told you to study part A on the test, A was not on the test, and he had a different kind of test. Mm -hmm. He had a bunch of bones laid out on the table, and and what's uh, ironically, uh, he tells you uh, like he's just like you should just know the bones in the body. And I was like. I'm not Google. I can't program my brain to know any of this. And ironically, he he wasn't coming back the following year, <laughs> according to my one of my advisors. And it's like, oh, he didn't make the best teacher award. <laughs> I wonder why he doesn't come back. <laughs> so now, so what I've been doing lately. Uh, alongside running my business and speaking here and there i my uh my my college has just got a new person in charge of the account well they call it the disability center and i don't like the name whatsoever because it doesn't fit because not everybody who has extra challenges can't walk and not everybody and then calling somebody saying disabled so you're paying attention to saying that they're either in a wheelchair or crutches or, or, some, or braces. And it's like, that's not right either. And and one of my students in the class, he said to one of the students in the class, he said, well, accommodations is like sound, sound like you're trying to accommodate me. Uh, and this person wasn't, he was like everyone else, no extra challenges or anything. It's like, but how can you possibly think that? It's like there's a self help self help desk, and so it's like well, accommodation sounds to sound like you're like I'm trying like if I I would go to find questions about the cafeteria and say, like, well, if you have questions about the cafeteria, obviously you can't read the signs in the college, and it's like it says the cafeteria this way. <laughs> and like boy, I, of course I didn't say any of that, but um, but. Like I said, what I'm doing in the college, they because my my professor she has two uh, kids of her own uh, on the spectrum, and she, where I'm working on a panel to work on to get on a panel in the college to help advocate for others. I'm also I, I was also part of a co-authored book. Uh, I don't know if we've reached number one on Amazon yet. Um, they don't do a very good job of telling. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then also, oh yeah, I've, I I'm also currently working on a secret project that I cannot tell you about. <laughs> um, it's not fair. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had to say, but it's close to being done. So but I said that the last three years. <laughs> you have a ways to go. Uh, <laughs> but to wrap up the uh, uh, there's a few things I want you to remember that people, just because uh, I'm on the autism spectrum, other, there's other a lot of other people on the spectrum have gone, maybe some similarities overlap, some similarities do not overlap. For instance, I met someone who really, really likes math. And I was like, yeah, um, I don't think this friendship is going to work yet. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I was friends with him anyway, but uh, he, so, so but, but basically I want you to take away is that everybody who's on the spectrum is different. There's no, it's not one size fits all, uh, especially the education department tends to forget that. And, lately and every time. Also the health care system really forgets that too. 
for instance, I, I, I actually had five doctors who, so six different doctors who, who wrote an article from my website, all contributed. And they talked, and the article was like six things that needs to be changed in the healthcare industry. And one of them was like, we need to get more people with extra challenges to all the help that they need in one place. So think, think of like Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. You got your, uh, I had my ear doctor in all in one place. I had this person who, because I was in being my gross spurs at the time, he was helping me, my parents navigate to help me get to the, how tall I should be uh, to where I am today. I also had my audiologist, all my specialty care doctors. Now, I, now I'm trying to find new doctors because of my insurance. I had to go to this place, I had to go to this place, I had to go to this place, back to this place, and this doctor does not talk to this doctor, this doctor does not talk to this one. I'm like, what a stupid system. I was like, here, give me, give, give me at least one full year, I could change the system, and uh, <laughs> hell, I should go run. Can't lose. So... So note that no no one's journey in the autism world is the same. Autism does not mean the end of the world for every it's not a life sentence. Yeah, you have it for the rest of your life, but can either let it make you or break you. And last of all, yeah, you're gonna hit roadblocks, but who doesn't hit roadblocks in this world? Yeah. I'm I'm still getting I'm still trying to get an MRI from my insurance company. Yes. They won't pay up, and yet they, they they make me go all around in circles to do. They, well, it's just gonna keep costing you more money out of your pocket. Yeah. You could have just paid up the first yeah. time. Yeah. And hey, it's not my money. Yeah. So just remember. Autism is not the end of the world. It does not need to be cured. And if you see people on the internet saying, hey, I found a cure for autism, those people are robotic and they're fake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's it. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, because you say extra challenges. What are your extra challenges? Well, my extra challenges uh, for me is I... Well, I I have two inward pointing knees. One of them currently has mild arthritis in the knee that I just found that two weeks ago. And then I wanted to ask my doctor, I was like, can I pay you not to tell me that? <laughs> um, and then he also, um, my, uh, I also live with spinal stenosis in my neck, which makes it hard for me. I, I do drive, I do have, I actually do have a an extended mirror to help me see out of the blind spots better. But I I to understand autism, I don't I the arthritis is has nothing to do yeah. with autism and the stenosis has yeah. nothing to do with autism. But for a child who has autism, yeah. what are the the challenges? Like what's hard for you to do? Um or what was hard for you to do when you were little? Well, math and science is still hard for me to well, do. Well, me too. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not, as far as I know, yeah. I'm not on the spectrum. Yeah. Well, what's hard for me to do is that I, uh, one of the things I find very difficult for me is writing and taking notes at the same time because I do not process information very well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, I went to this uh, conference and uh, business conference in Chicago. I have a recorder, digital recorder. I know my laptop can record, can record, but then I have to charge it for every so often. And, and it was like a, an all day event from nine o'clock in the morning to nine thirty at night. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that, that won't even last. And they have outlets and everything. So, but. I, but so for me, my my wrists are very very weak. So for instance, like uh, 
like if I'm trying to take notes while if I was presenting, not even presenting, but if like somebody else was here presenting, I was trying to take notes and he's just talking very fast. He's like, there's no way I'm, my handwriting starts to, like I try fitting it on the page and starts going off half the page and I can't even read my own handwriting half of the times. I also have a hard time sometimes sitting uh, in school for hours on end. I mean, I, I've only taken this semester, I'm taking only one class at a time uh, because like I said, I'm stuck with math and science and of course I'm taking this ethics at the moment. So I didn't think math and, <laughs> and ethics is gonna go to good, would be a good combination. And uh, so basically, uh, but the reason I told you about the business event is that when I'm listening to people, I can actually take more information away versus, wait, you want me to write? And at the same time, there's like, well, what about typing? It's like, I'm, it's like, I'm a pretty fast typer, but to type them while somebody else is talking, like, for instance, you, you know, the people like in a, in a courtroom who do take all the notes, uh, yeah. it's like, uh -huh. I, I cannot do that. I was like, I'm sorry, wait, wait, wait. It's like, you want me to take notes? Yeah, I'm, uh, it's like, I, yeah, I might make, like miss half of the conversation about yeah. something you're saying before. Uh, so I, I, even though I haven't been fully diagnosed with, uh, I'm, I feel like I'm, I have a little ADHD where sometimes it's hard for me to focus. I, there was one day my dad, came into my room like before he went back down to the shore and he's like I was telling him that I was working and he's like working you listen to music and I was like oh, there's actually been studies to show that music has helped you be, you know, uh, being focused and so I, I was like I can't really focus if I don't have something it's like if somebody just speaking uh for instance, my my current class is like an hour and 35 minutes long. I can focus for it a whole hour, but then I'm actually 35 minutes long. I'm like, especially if I, I'm in the, my, my, my college has these totally contract kind of chairs. So picture like a tray table oh, uh, yeah, from, yeah. The, from an airline. And it's like, so it's like you're all squeezed in. <laughs> so this part of the desk is moving, but the chair doesn't, but like it's on wheels, but it's still not enough. So it's like, so you, like the back just kind of like pushes you forward. So it's like, I'm all hunched in. I don't like this thing. I was like, can I get out of this? And so I feel like I have a little ADHD uh, but, but my strengths are, I, I can, basically I can speed read through an article and get the gist of it and tell you back to it. I have a really good memory of, uh, like I have a really scary good memory that really annoys my parents at times. But <laughs> I, it's like, well, I do. And then it's like, Jimmy, shut up. And it, you just show us. <laughs> So that's my, some of my strengths and I wouldn't say weaknesses, but this is just some of my challenges that I mm -hmm. still deal with. Like I, I, my my mom also agreed with me. I don't think my handwriting is going to get any better. Any better <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like, Jimmy, well, Jimmy, you could practice. And it's like, let's be realistic. Like, mm -hmm. and it's like running my whole business and running anything else. It's like, you think I'm really going to practice my handwriting skills? It's like. 29 years later in life, and say like, it's gotten me that far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't really need a practice. <laughs> I can type everything else. You said that you have your parents, your family, and your friends to thank for how well you've been doing and everything. And I was wondering what advice you have for parents of children who've been diagnosed with autism. Mm -hmm. Like, what was what is, mm -hmm. are you most appreciative of that your yeah. parents did? Well. I was appreciated that they, that they didn't use the word autism around me. They did or they did not? They did not. They did. And I also appreciated that my cousins never treated me any differently. Uh, if I was having a, like a tough day for a reason, like, uh, I, I mean, not like seeing them was like a tough day, but like something was just bothering me or something. They didn't go off and tell their own parents, it's like, oh, my cousin's whacked or weird. 
every time when I go see them, they always give me a, uh, they always look forward to seeing me and they always like mess with me, um, joke with me, annoy me, whatever. <laughs> and, and, and my brother, even though that uh, he, we broke our, each other's shoes growing up with each other. Yeah. Is uh, he older or younger? He's young. Yeah. I, I mean, he's older. He's older. And he, uh, now I uh, share his Netflix account with him. <laughs> and so I basically I mooch off of him. At the yeah. <laughs> so if your parents never used it around you, when did you, at what age did they finally talk to you about it? Or did you, re when did you realize more about your diagnosis? Honestly, I, I can't, uh, I had a feeling that I was a, a little different by going to my own IEP meetings. I didn't know what it, any of that stood for at the time. Basically, I kind of found out by myself, uh, like to a certain point, and then I finally asked my parents uh, what this is mean and if they could tell me a little bit about it. And I did some research out of on myself. And um, so they just, my mom told me about stuff and asked me if I had any questions. But basically around, I would say around college time I started. I, so I didn't go into college until like sometime in my early twenties only because I didn't know what I wanted to do with uh, in my life at the moment. And plus I hated school back then. So right. I was like, sure. more school? Yeah. That sounds like a prison sentence. Yeah. yeah. And then they, and I kind of was afraid. It's like, please, I, was like, I don't think I can take a full co course load because it's like, like one of my other extra challenges is, is that if I, process too much information and everything and my brain just literally kind of shuts down and it's, it was like I hear what you're saying but um, it's going through have one ear at the other uh, 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 and, and like the other than most people <laughs> I was like me and my mom had this long conversation I, I all I asked her was a question and she got in from a b c d e f g yeah. I was like you know, mom, I just wanted one simple question. And I was like, I'm sorry, you're right. And it's like, come again? I'm, 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 I'm afraid you want to remember. Yeah. I, I wish I had my digital recorder at the time. So, I, yes. so what do you remember about, because you grew up in this church and you went to Sunday school in this church and you went to confirmation in this church. What do you remember about did you feel different? Did you feel included? Um, I felt included, but I, I didn't really know. Like, no offense. Like, I, I at the time, I didn't know what I wanted to be a part of. So I kind of just felt like, oh, I have to go here because if I don't get confirmed, I had to tell my grandma that I'd be the only grandchild of not being just like everybody around. else. <laughs> and and like now I like being part of being here and everything. It just at the time I was like, I don't know what any of this means. I'm kind of all processing differently. And like Sunday school was like okay, my parents tell me I have to go. Yes. And so they told me I had to come. And so can't really argue with my parents or I get my TV taken away, <laughs> TV ta time taken away, or the computer time taken away. Mm -hmm. And that kind of happened to me a lot because I got into a lot of trouble at school. You were doing so well. Yeah. This is beautiful what you're doing for us. Yeah. It's so wonderful Thank you. to hear you talk. And to explain this to us, you are giving us such insight that, you know, we hear this out here. Autism is all around us, but it's on the spectrum, you know, you hear this. But, you know, you're wonderful. Thank you so much for what you're doing today. Thank I you. appreciate it. Really do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
you know, thank you. I, yeah. Can I say just briefly, and then I'm gonna wrap it up, but I taught confirmation for many years. And I didn't know the motivation for any of the kids in the class. And we're reluctant to tell me. exactly what you said, yes. which is, I don't know why I'm here. And, yes. uh, and yeah. along the way, we learned. And I had one fellow who had Asperger's, and he, he stood in the doorway of every class. He didn't want to get into the class. Yeah. But he was in the class in his mind. Mm -hmm. And when we went around the room for discussion, I'd say, and do you have any thoughts? And if he wanted to, he shared. If he didn't, he didn't. But he was included in that group on his terms. And I think that's the most important thing that we can do and take from this is when we come across people with different needs or different abilities rather than disability, different abilities, we have them deal with their comfort level and kind of get it out that. But teachers never know the motivation of the kids that they face. I, I came off being a pastor for 40 years and I had I late I, I had late onset autism. I didn't want to see anybody. I didn't want to <laughs> deal with it. But I, I overcame it. Um, and this class has been a great, great help for me to get out from under my shell. And I thank you for your presentation, thank Jimmy. You. That was thank really you. Thank you. I'm good. Thank you. Jimmy, I respect him. Then he has a class. Uh -huh.